Guys, it's my birthday today. I turned 28 and as a gift from me to you to celebrate, I wanted to give you all my thoughts and feelings about the new killer in Dead by Daylight from the Ringu universe. It's the Onryo coming to all platforms on March 8th. She's currently out on the public test build, which means that we get to try out her kit, see what her perks are and get a really good feeling of how this killer may play when she does release to every platform on March 8th. So in this video, what I'm going to do is go over her perks, her power, her gameplay loop, and give you a first impressions, tier list placement, so you can understand just how strong the Unreal is. If you like this video or you want to give me a birthday present, just hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed, then hit that red button. So one thing to note is that the public test build is not the best environment for overall testing. Uh, one reason is because it's only limited to Steam players, so you don't get true representation of every player in Dead by Daylight on different platforms. Another reason is that the survivors are not always trying to win the game and escape, so it can be sometimes not the best environment to test the strength of a killer versus good survivors. Uh, and also, I typically find when I play killer on the public test build, I learn to play the killer at a faster rate than the survivors learn to counter the killer, which means that my findings are sometimes biased towards uh, me stomping people who just haven't quite learned how to counter that killer yet. However, this PTB, I did go out of my way to play versus some much better survivors. Uh, for example, Hens, you may know from Ot Starver's stream, a very talented survivor player who played some games versus him, just to see how it would work. And I think one thing that's really confusing about the Onryo is the fact that she does not actually have a chase element to her power. Well, not specifically an in-chase element. And that is very different from Behavior's usual killer design. Usually, they add some form of anti-loop, and that's been the way that they've been doing things. Either killer goes fast, or killer has anti-loop. And so this is quite unique from Behavior, and it will take some time for both the survivors and the killers to learn how to utilize that aspect of her power well. But already, what I am seeing from the Onryo is that she will be the new queen of the hit and run playstyle. A playstyle that was dead in the water as soon as Michaela released with Circle of Healing. And I have a feeling that the Onryo's ability to teleport around the map at will might just be able to outheal a Circle of Healing team and the hit and run playstyle will stay alive with her. So, for unique perks, well, Call of Brian has to be the strongest of the three for me. Its ability to regress the generator at twice the speed from a kick Paired with Pop Goes the Weasel, Corrupt Intervention, you can create a stalemate in a 3-gen situation because the perk has no cooldown and it regresses the gen at that 200% for 60 seconds, which is just enough to get rid of a, a huge amount of progress without the need for even Pop Goes the Weasel to regress it. However, Scourge Hook Flood of Rage is quite a unique perk in the sense that it's reverse barbecue and I found it really useful on the Onryo because of her ability to teleport to TVs at will. So you can actually catch survivors off guard really easily with that perk. And they're not going to expect you're coming because there's no indication to them that their aura has been revealed. Merciless Storm is kind of a fun perk for the survivor. I really enjoy going up against it. I don't necessarily see it being a very good perk outside of the niche cases like Impossible Skill Check Doc, right? In those cases, then yeah, you can probably make a quite a mean build, but I'm not sure it's going to become a new meta perk at all. That's enough about perks. Let's jump into gameplay. And when you spawn into the map, you are in your other world state, which means that you are invisible to all survivors outside of a 32 meter range and you have the undetectable status. So survivors cannot see your red stain or hear you approaching. When you get closer to survivors within the 32 meters, you start flickering between invisible and visible. This flicker is 1.5 seconds visible and then one second invisible. And there are add-ons to increase that timer. And then when eventually you get close to survivors, you have to manifest to be able to attack them. Now, this is a 2.5 charge time, very similar to how Wraith works with his uncloak, except for the fact that you are not slowed down whatsoever. And you actually have no collision, which means you can get right up on top of the survivor and stay very close to them during the manifestation stage. Now, one thing that's really confusing to survivors during that manifestation period is that the effect lingers after you are completely manifested and are able to attack them. So the undetectable status lasts for a full second after you've demanifested and you can attack immediately during that full second, as well as the fact that the flickering invisibility lingers for another four seconds after you've manifested, making it really hard for a survivor to actually know when they are vulnerable to attack because you look like you are still in your demanifested form. And what's really powerful about this is the mind game potential, even at short wall loops, because the Onryo is one of the shortest killers 
in Dead by Daylight. Side note, I do actually think that the killer's perspective on the PTB might be bugged. I know she's short, but it looks like she's Victor's height or Old Blight's POV, which is just a little bit lower than I think where her actual eye line is in the game. And we'll see if behavior addresses that. But I do think when she comes out, we might see that her perspective from the killer's perspective just get raised up a little bit. But her shortness and her manifestation flicker is what makes her strong at loops because the survivor doesn't have a red stain to rely on and you are flickering from invisible to visible constantly even after you have manifested for four seconds so you can use that to your advantage to confuse survivors and the amount of times survivors were looking the wrong way because they thought i was coming that what direction you are so spookily silent the survivors really struggle to track you so that means that after you've hit a survivor or whilst you're approaching a survivor you should remain in your demanifested state or you should demanifest so that you can make use of the flickering invisibility as well as the lack of terror radius and red stain to catch survivors off at loops. If you've ever played versus a spirit using passive phase add-ons, it can be really confusing sometimes where she's approaching from around a loop. Now imagine it with no red stain at all and longer invisibility periods. That's what Ringu is able to do. But the Onryo's main power comes from her ability to teleport to TV sets around the map at will. And what I think you should be doing as a killer is as soon as you've hit a survivor, demanifest, teleport to a TV. Look around and find a survivor there. If there's no survivor there, you demanifest again and teleport immediately to a new TV. And you just continue repeating this cycle. You should not be roaming from generator to generator. You should not be committing to long chases. You should be trying to find quick hits for a hit and run and then going to another survivor and getting every survivor injured as quickly as possible. There's even an add-on called Bloody Fingernails, which increases the movement speed that you get after projecting from a TV by 50%. And with this add-on, you can catch up to survivors so quickly, catch them off guard on generators, or even use it as a chase power like you would with a Freddy's teleport to a generator. One thing I was trialing on the PTB was using Sloppy Butcher, so it takes longer to heal, and then stacking information perks. Hex Plaything and Hex Retribution or the aura reading that you get when a survivor cleanses a hex totem as well as the new scourge hook floods of rage for that seven second aura reading after a survivor gets unhooked with that into a tv projection you catch so much survivor off guard that it's really kind of crazy how quickly she can turn the tides onto a team now not every map is going to be viable for that play style obviously big maps and open maps are going to hurt her surprise factor when it comes to projecting out of a tv and there is some form of rng that comes with the tvs where they're going to be placed around the map now one thing i don't think the survivors were doing on the ptb well was actually countering the tv sets when they were working on generators i think you should be going out of your way to turn tv sets off especially the one that's right next to your generator the way that the spawning logic works is if there is a tv set next to a generator the next tv has to spawn 16 meters away from that generator so but that still is quite close to a generator so that there are circumstances where there will be two tv sets that can access a generator but it stays off for 60 seconds and you only gain one stack of condemnation for grabbing the vhs and then you gain an additional stack every 30 seconds after that so you should be able to take the vhs tape out finish your generator and then go and put the vhs tape back into your selected tv to get rid of four stacks of condemnation and if you can continue repeating that cycle and every other survivor is also doing that it will hurt the onryo's ability to hit and run and also teleport around the map and you shouldn't be at much risk at all of becoming condemned and being able to be moried and it'll also be a case-by-case -case scenario because not every killer player is capable of utilizing macro gameplay which is big picture gameplay teleporting around the map hit and running and just controlling the survivors on a big picture level rather than singular chases which would be considered the micro level so what does this mean for the onryo overall what well, means that the chances of you getting a condemned mori is quite low it would be a bit like how pigs bear traps don't often really net kills but when they do it's quite a nice surprise if you get it it's going to feel like a birthday present did i mention it's my birthday but because of her ability to teleport to TV, she actually has a high level of map pressure and a good killer player is going to be able to utilize that TV projection to hit and run to a very high level. So you have two choices when it comes to setting up the on -rear. You can either stack aura reading with a uh, healing slowdown so that you can try and hit and run to a high level and control the survivors on a massive macro level, which is a little bit risky, but very rewarding when it works out. Or you can go for the safe bet and run perks like pain resonance, deadlock, uh, and just kind of slow down the gens passively over time but just bring something like thrilling tremors so you know which survivors are working on gens 
and maybe bring dead man switch with that as well so that you can then push them off the generators with your tv projection i think there's quite a few interesting play styles for the killer and that's going to become very very tiring very quickly for the survivors if you do opt in for that second strategy not to say that hit and run play style is typically very fun to play versus either but at least with hit and run play style it does feel a little bit more uh, fair i think rather than just turning the objective off for the survivors with perks like you know dead man switch and thrilling tremors so where does this leave the onrio on a tier list well this is ptb so it is very early impressions it may change if she receives buffs or nurse or as the survivors learn to counter her better but i have to say that just the map projection alone puts her in the a tier for me it's probably a low a tier above freddy for sure in her, her ability to uh to control the map because of the lack of cooldown on the projection that's a huge thing there's no cooldown for her ability at all and that is what makes her strong for me because you can just demanifest manifest project at will and try and find survivors as quickly as possible as quickly as you can psych your abilities that is how quick you can apply pressure onto the map if you start guessing right or you bring the information perks to find the survivors and through a very successful hit and run play style you are going to absolutely shut down the survivors abilities to work gen well because you're just not going to allow them to heal themselves and then through that you're going to end chases very quickly using your projection and i actually do think that despite the fact she doesn't have an inherent anti-loop ability a demanifestation manifest play style with the flickering lack of red light is very powerful at the right size loop it doesn't take much really for the the loop to be just short enough that you can utilize that playstyle worse well versus the survivor and you win some 50 50s through it for sure i think behavior have done a pretty good job though overall on the onrio especially from a sound design and a visual perspective that aesthetic is incredible so big props to behavior's art team uh, the actual power itself well it's really at the hands of the user to make it work for them and i think that someone who has high skill in their gameplay and macro level gameplay is going to utilize it very well someone who understands how mind games work and how to utilize the lack of red stain and those invisibility stages in the dma manifestation is going to absolutely bamboozle survivors at loops and i do think that we might even see a buff for the onrio on the condemnation side i think that you could probably make the survivor become exposed when they are condemned and she would still remain balanced because of the ease of actually being able to get rid of that condemnation state at any point for the survivor but it would add that extra element of fear and risk when it comes to turning tvs off which would balance her a little bit more in my opinion let me know what your first impressions are do they differ from mine have you got a chance to play her and are you excited for the ringu chapter coming to dead by daylight i would like to know and i hope you guys enjoyed this video bye Check me out,